yes, it's that time of the week again. Monday's on the story when we dig for old with the help of the Oregon Historical Society. Tonight, we actually get to go inside their secret warehouse. Carrie Timchuk is our guide. Let's take a look. We have a, a little bit later, you'll see a, a large, large, large filing system of the Oregonians. I said the, uh, obviously the most influential paper in Portland history and Oregon history, been around since the 1850s and 60s. Uh, we, uh, until recent times, we received one copy of every Oregonian, which we kept uh, for, for the file. Now, of course, again, modern times are all digitized. You can find them digitally. But just to show you an example of what old newspapers it used to look like uh, with how they reported things, the color of the comic section, uh, what was big. These are the Oregonians uh, from 1959. And here you can see the front page of a big color comics here, the comic section here. Uh, Oregonian back then cost five cents uh, for, per issue. Uh, one of my favorite ones here is this is the Oregonian front page of Tuesday, January 13th, 1959. And it's reporting on the news, of course, from the day before, January 12th, 1959. And the big event that day was the inauguration of Mark Hatfield as Oregon governor, uh, Oregon's youngest governor ever then and, and still today. Uh, and January 12th, 1959, when that happened, um, it was also the day I was born. So. I didn't make the headlines, but Governor Hatfield, later Senator Hatfield, who would become a very close friend of mine, he was in the news that day being sworn in as governor. This is one of my favorite uh, paintings in our art collection. Uh, this painting presided over the Portland Hilton for many years, and it was uh, commissioned by Serge de Rovencourt who was the late legendary major domo of the Hilton for many years. And this was Portland's hoi polloi. Uh, you can see in here Phil Knight and Gert Boyle, uh, Vera Katz, Chris Richemere, the late James DePriest, uh, the Hatfields, uh, Pete Mark. Uh, you could go on and on and on with the Portlanders who were the influential uh, from the 80s, 90s, 2000s. Uh, and there's Jerry Frank, the late Jerry Frank. Serge, uh, was very clever and he would use this as a way perhaps to uh, reward his friends and to punish people who had done Portland wrong. And so if you were a new businessman or new leader in Portland who did good things for the city, Serge would have the painter, uh, Bill Pappas, uh, paint you in. And perhaps if you got involved in a scandal, you might find yourself painted out. For it. So it was a living portrait of, of, the, of Portland's uh, hoi polloi. Uh, just really colorful, and when the Hilton changed uh, kind of the look, uh, Serge de Rovencourt uh, donated this to the Oregon Historical Society. Comes with a key so you can tell exactly who, who it is. Uh, a recent addition to our, our collection is, is this wonderful painting of the one and only Bill Shonley. And uh, Bill uh, gave this to the Oregon Historical Society uh, in the year before his passing, so we're honored to have it. Interesting stuff. Just a fraction of the tour tonight. There's so much more to see and experience. We're going to highlight that on the Mondays and the weeks to come, so be sure to watch for that.